Good morning, Jesus Image Church. I'm so glad to have you here, and uh, we just welcome you to, to worship the Lord this morning. We welcome our online family too. Thank you for joining us. So if you could just turn your affection to Jesus now. Jesus, we love you so much, Lord. You're the only reason we're here, God. Lord, you are our great high priest, Lord, and in your very body, you broke the dividing wall between God and man, Lord. So today, as we lift you up in worship, Lord, I pray that you would show us your glory, that you would show us your beauty, Lord. Let us see your radiance, Jesus. Lord, we love you so much. We ask you to come visit us today with your power, Lord, and your freedom and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.
your sky forever all glory all honor all blessing all power all wisdom dominion is your sky forever all glory all honor all blessing all power Your sky forever. 
just sing in the spirit for a minute. Come on, just lift your voice. want everyone just for about the next 30 seconds just close your eyes I want you to join the hands but just not across the aisles and just pray in the spirit would you do that Thank you, Father. lift your voices under the age of, keep playing guys, keep playing. If you're under the age of 25 and you're hungry for God, I want you to get down here. If you're 25 or younger, come down here. Just spread out. I want you to spread out. Come on, this is beautiful. Give the Lord praise. Come, come. Y'all just keep playing. Y'all just got to be led of the Lord. And then I want y'all to just be praying in the Spirit. Joel, I need to hear you more, buddy. Can you get a pad that will fill the whole room? Less piano, more, more pad. That's right. More. Now I want, I want, uh, I want presence group leaders and the prayer team. I don't want you to step on anyone, but I want you, if you're near them, I want you to get a hand on someone's shoulder. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask you to awaken a generation. I want everyone in their seats praying in the spirit. Stretch your hands towards this next generation. Stretch your hands. And I want you praying in faith. Lord, let your fire fall on this next generation. Thank you, Lord. Let your fire fall on them. Yeah, Sharice, Sharice, you get out there too. Put your hands on them. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost fall on this next generation. Amy, start praying. I want everyone here with their eyes closed, engaging heaven for this next generation. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, would you fall upon everyone here this morning, Lord? Would your presence fall upon them, Lord, like never before? Lord, I just pray for radical hunger, hunger after your presence, Jesus. Oh, Lord, that they would just desire only one thing, Lord, that their soul, their soul desires for just your face, Lord, your touch, Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord. 
just like David was after your own heart, these these, these people would be after your heart, Jesus, that these young students would be after your heart, Lord. Father, protect them, Jesus. Protect them from this world, Lord. Let them only run after you and you alone. Lord, that they would hunger and they would dwell in the secret place. They would dwell with you, not visit, Jesus, but dwell, Lord. Would dwell with you, Jesus. Father, I pray a a boldness upon them, a boldness upon them this morning. Light a fire that will never go out, a fire that will never go out, Lord. That they live for the audience of one, Jesus. Amen. Not for man, but for you, Lord. Amen. They live Amen. for the audience of one. Amen. They live for your touch, Amen. your face, your words. Oh, Lord, use them mightily, Jesus. Amen. Use them mightily to usher you in, Lord, in the last days. Amen. To usher in the King, Jesus. That you will use them to usher your name in. Oh, Lord, purify these brides, Lord. Purify your church. Let them be used to, to, to be marked them, Lord. Mark them for this generation. That they're ruined for anything else but you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Pastor, you pray. Everyone in the seats, I want you agreeing. I want you agreeing. Yes. I just, I just pray, God. Thank you that your word says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for you for they shall be satisfied. I just want to encourage if you Thank responded you, today, can you just in your own words surrender to the Lord? We can't do it for you. No one can force you to surrender. Just in your own words, can you ask Him? Ask Him for more. It says that the pure shall see God. Lord, I just pray a purity over every person that responded, God. We thank you, Jesus, that you are righteousness, God, that you are purity, Jesus, that you are humility, Lord. It says in John 15, to abide in Jesus, God. Lord, help them to abide in you, Jesus, not through works, not through striving, God, Help us to yield to you, Jesus. Teach us, God, how to minister to you, God. Teach us how to tend to your wounds, God. I just pray, Lord, that you would rest upon every person that responded, God. I pray for first love. I pray that you would wake them up in the night, God. I pray, God, that you would reveal your word, God, that you, would, that you would spark a hunger for your word like never before, Jesus. Right now, God, mark them, Jesus, that they would not simply go back to their seats and be the same, God, but I pray that you would mark them, that you would change them, Jesus, that you would set them apart, God, to be lights, Lord, to be salt, Lord. And we understand we can do nothing without you. So we surrender to you, Jesus. Yeah, Lord, we thank you right now. Just stretch your hands one more time. Lord, thank you for this generation that will love Jesus, that will walk in the purity of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the addiction of the Lord. And we as a church, we bless you in Jesus' name. We bless you and may the Lord's power come upon you and may the gospel dwell richly in your hearts. May the word of God drip, drip from your very being in Jesus name. And we plead the blood over you and declare that the world will not have you. Not a single day, not a single day. You will, you will serve the Lord all your days in the name of Jesus. Amen. Guys, let's seal it with praise. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Come on, let's bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're welcome to go back to your seats. I want us to actually just, I want this next generation to feel celebrated in the house of God. So you guys are welcome to go back. I love you. You have a great future. You have a great future. Amen. Amen. Esther, let's welcome Esther. <laughs> okay, guys. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, Thank you, Lord. So beautiful, the Lord's here. <laughs> wow. Every time, I feel like it always. I just pray we never treat it as common. When he comes into the room, we're gonna go into tithe and offering. This is a time we get to just respond to the Lord. Obviously, a time of worship is offering and now we get to respond to Him even in our actions with what He has given us. The Lord actually led me to Genesis 20. It's uh, verse, sorry, eight verse 20. And it says, then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And obviously right after it says that it was a pleasing aroma that the Lord smelled and it was pleasing to Him. And as I was reading this, the Lord just convicted me how the, Noah had limited, those were the only animals on the whole entire earth. It was limited, it was costly. And Noah took not, not any animal, he took the clean ones, the clean ones, and he offered it to the Lord. And it was his first response. So we see that the Lord preserves Noah and his family in his faithfulness and his grace and his love. And Noah's immediate response was to offer him something costly. And the Lord just started convicting me. He's like, how are you gonna respond to me when I'm faithful to you? Will you offer me something costly? And then I started reading and I noticed that God didn't ask him for it. He didn't ask him, give me this offering of every clean one. Noah gave it to him. And the Lord just started, there is an offering, obviously our, our tithes, which is what the Lord asked us for. It's, it's an obligation, giving it to him because he's gave it, given everything. And then there's this costly offering that we can give to the Lord. And it's something maybe he didn't even ask you, but you're like, I love you too much, Jesus. I wanna respond with radical generosity. And that's what I felt the Lord was saying, that we would respond in radical generosity and give to Jesus, not something, not something that's just, uh, uh, not unclean animals, but something clean, something that was costly to us. And so um, if you need your tithe, um, envelope I want you to raise your hand and then I just want to pray over our offering that the Lord would multiply it that he would use it for his glory anything that we sow we know God is more generous so I want you guys as we're giving I really feel like to sow in faith not just out of obligation and I just want to pray over it so if you have your tithe and offering I just want you to hold it in your hand and just want to bless it so Lord we just thank you God we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to give to you, Jesus. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your blood. Lord, and today, God, we wanna to respond to you rightly. So Jesus, we give this into your hands and I pray that you would bless every person that's giving today. I just pray for this offering that you would bless it, that you would multiply it, that you would use it for your glory, Lord. It is all for you. In Jesus' name, amen. And also, if you're watching online and you would like to give, you can um, text the number on your screen or anyone in the room, you can text give to the number on your screen and you can rush the buckets.
heaven song. Sing it. Can we stand, please? Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful, whatever that was. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's just lift our hands. Jesus, we love you. We look to you today. What a privilege that is to look to you. And we adore you. And we just give you all of our worship, all of it, every ounce that flows from our hearts. Receive it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Holy Spirit. We look to you now. Teach us your ways. Teach us your word. Move. Interrupt the message. You're the point. Do whatever you want to do. Touch the people deeply. Lord, I ask that what you began with those young ones, that you would touch us all. That that would be like a seed sown in this meeting and in the months to come.
strengthen the young ones, Lord. Strengthen them. As your word says, they are young and have overcome the evil one. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace and the strength that they will run with. And let them, oh, uh, I feel this, this is of the spirit right here. And let them, let them run from this house to the nations of the world, to the cities of America. Let them run and then run home and be filled and run out again. Do it, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Let this be like a watering hole for the broken, for the victorious, and for everyone in between, for broken families. I need your agreement here. For broken families and broken marriages and broken hearts and broken bodies and broken eternities, Lord. Let this be like a Holy Spirit river, like a spring that gushes for life flows from. Let today be the beginning of something very new and fresh. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we lift a praise? Can we do that? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you love on a few people just before you're seated? I think I'm going to sit this morning. Well, I'll start that way, if that's okay, if I could have a chair. Thank you, Dion. Love you. start seated and that'll last five minutes. Well, welcome everyone. Is anybody here for the first time this morning? We just want to let you know we love you. Would you all just stand? Would you stand if you're here for the first time? Wow. God bless you. Come on, Jesus image. Welcome them. Welcome them. What an honor to have you. An honor to have you. It's a joy and privilege to have you here with us. Thank you for coming. May the Lord just get you really good. <laughs> really good. May you go home uh, having to explain things but not knowing how. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, um, uh, I just wanted to let you in on a few things that have, are, are going on in my heart spiritually and then a few invitations corporately. So, Number one, um, I started my 21-day Daniel fast yesterday uh, that, because I was sick and <laughs> I didn't want to completely wither away. And the Lord understands. My plan was to start at the beginning of the year and then I caught that, whatever that thing is going around. Half the church has it. And um, so I started yesterday and I want to invite all of you into that. I'm not going to demand that you do it, but uh, our team, our interns, our students, uh, our church family, we're actually all one big church family. We are, this is the direction we are going, not because it's the beginning of the year. It is a wonderful way to start the year, but because it is a wonderful way to encounter the Lord. Now, most people really devalue in the church setting the Daniel fast. They think it's like, you know, kindergarten fasting. <laughs> But in actuality, it's a very powerful fast, if you look at it biblically. The Daniel fast, if you look at Daniel, for instance, as an example, um, opens the revelation of the scriptures. It opens our hearts to God's voice. Daniel hears the Lord, right? We see that it, that fast uh, actually releases uh, the, uh, the ministering spirits, the angels of the Lord, over our lives, we see that happen with Daniel. Remember, the angel comes to him, but there was a wrestling match and it delayed. How many of you know the wrestling match is over because Jesus has overcome? Thank you, Lord. It never really was a wrestling match, but anyways, there was a resistance. And all of this happens in Daniel. Boldness comes through that fast. Uh, you see like a restoration of youth to him physically and emotionally. So it's a very powerful fast. And what I've discovered is the Lord gives me many more dreams when that fast begins than when I'm not on it. Okay, now, what I typically do on this fast, again, I am not telling you to do this part. 
disclaimer. Okay. Am I telling you to do this? No. <laughs> Judy's like, we know you well enough. No. I'm actually not. I'm telling you what I do. Okay. I will often add a 19-day fast on the back end of the 21-day Daniel where I'll do um, liquids typically. And I'll add vitamins and other like, you know, shakes and stuff. But I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just telling you that's what I've done in the past and I've really seen amazing breakthroughs. So in totality, it's a 40-day fast, but it's kind of a mix between a 21-day and a 19, 21-day Daniel and 19-day liquid. One time I lost track and went 62 days. Yeah, my mom goes, when did you start? We were on I-75. I was preaching in Gainesville. Of course, jazz. Yeah, Gainesville. <laughs> okay, all right. So I was preaching there on the way home. It was like 11. Oh, no, it wasn't 11. It couldn't have been. It was earlier. I preached. I was tired. My mom's like, well, I'm hungry. She said, are you hungry? I said, I've been hungry for 60. Or I thought it was like 30-something days. I said, I'm still on my fast, mom. It's not over yet. She goes, well, when did you start? And I told her. And uh, she goes, your fast ended 20 days ago. <laughs> and I, I'm not exaggerating. We were literally passing a Chick-fil-A when she said that. I said, do you turn now? <laughs> and I made the dumbest mistake after that long. I ate three of those, uh, the spicy ones. And I ended up in a fetal position in the back seat, groaning, like seriously sweating and groaning. Uh, another time I, I finished a 40-day fast and I knew the exact minute that it was over. Because I remember when I started it, I did all the math. Uh, 15 minutes prior to, this, to the fast being over, I, I called a, a, an Italian restaurant and had a, a, an order of gnocchi and a, and, a, and a margarita pizza. I called it in, and it was done the minute my fast was over. I went in to get it, and uh, the plan was to eat it at home. I never, never got home with it. <laughs> I sat in the parking lot and just crushed it. <laughs> Paid the price for that as well. My brother once, my brother did like a 21-day fast, and he... He had to, it, was, it ended on a Saturday. He had to preach on a Sunday morning as a guest speaker. And he finished his fast with 50 wings and had to cancel. He couldn't preach. <laughs> he had to cancel. He's like, I'm sick. So funny. So in, in all honesty, I am burning in my heart right now. These last three or four days, I feel like I have a revival in my skin. And I am going to burn. I want you to burn with me. But if you don't, I'm going to burn. And I'm going to burn in front of you. And I want that to provoke you. But I feel a newfound grace that I feel is actually connected with the fast. That God, God was speaking to me last night. He's been waking me up early with incredible dreams of great detail. The other night, the Lord spoke to me. He woke me up at uh, right around 3 a.m. And I, I thought it was, I think I shared this last week, but I, shared, I thought it was 9 or 10. And it, it was 3. And I had so much energy going through my body that I just couldn't go back to sleep. And I, I finally thought, this must be the Lord. So I went to be with the Lord. And the Lord started speaking to me about two, uh, two cities, international cities, over and over, I was almost hearing an audible voice in my dream. And I, I don't want to give you the cities yet because we're going to roll it out. I can just say this. Our team is going to get ready to take what the Lord is doing here and what he's been doing in our events here to the nations of the world. And I'm so excited that it's led of the Spirit and not just our own idea to go do it. But it's time to take um, Jesus to the nations. Amen? And so... Uh, I'm hearing this city over and over again while I'm praying, and it was just wild. And then I began to see in like these night visions, these dreams, um, these cathedral-like buildings filled. I mean, I could hear our choir singing, and it was beautiful. And um, so I, I went back to bed and woke up at nine, finally, and 
I got a text message as soon as I woke up and so did Jess from the same person. And they said, we just had a dream about you or I just had a dream about you. I must share it with you. And I heard these two regions and they were the exact regions I was hearing. So God is speaking and um, all I can say is I am not I am not hitting the brakes. I'm going a million miles an, miles an hour at the face of Jesus right now. If I feel that grace, I'm getting the most out of it. And if you don't feel that grace, ask him for it. Because only the Holy Spirit can do it. And, and, and honestly, just give him a little firewood. There's no, how many of you know there's a great supply of fire in the Lord's nature? He's a consuming fire. You just need that little spark. Give him something to work with. It took me two days of fasting, two, and God slammed me. I feel like I'm born again again. Really, I feel like there's a full-on tent meeting in my heart right now. I've been so pent up to preach this this message today. Um, uh, During the offering while y'all were giving, I asked Carla, can I go up now? Can I go? Can I go? She's like, two more minutes. I just felt like I was locked up in a cage ready to come out. I'm going to burn. Your pastor is going to burn, and I want you to burn. I want you to burn. Let's get in on it together. What we need are a few thousand little grenades going off at the same time. That's how you have something that changes the nations corporately. I I feel like last year I spoke culturally to the house uh, at a corporate level, but I've really felt the Lord last week say, I want you to begin speaking to individual hearts. Because if each individual is set on fire by the Lord, you have a corporate issue in the best way. And that's what I want. I want us all to find the beauty of personal devotion. Not just this year, but until the Lord comes back. Amen? Amen. A few years ago, I was deeply touched. I don't have time to get into it all, but I had an encounter with the Lord. It was probably my last oh, real oh, dignity-destroying encounter. How many of you know the ones I'm talking about? But, you know, you, you, even if you tried to explain them, you wouldn't be able to, and they'd probably offend people. But I remember thinking, Lord, I, I know this is real. Could you give me a sign? Here's the sign, that when I travel, I won't tell anybody what happened to me. And then when I get behind the pulpit... Would you begin to touch people the same way? And he did for like a year. And I mean in some of the most docile uh, environments where this should not happen. I remember being in Nashville once and I had literally come, I was on the heels of this experience with the Lord and I stood behind the pulpit, did not tell them anything, just grabbed the pulpit and when I did, the power of God hit the place. People were crying and screaming and running to Jesus, and miracles started happening. I feel like I'm on the cusp of that again, personally. And these things come seasonally. Of course, we want to live in it, but if we lived in it, we wouldn't be able to like go on a date or anything. <laughs> There'd be no golf. How could you putt if you were shaking? <laughs> God would never do such a thing. Anyways, let's, let's go in together, amen? Okay. I, I've been teaching on Jesus in the Old Testament, but I'm gonna, I touched on devotion, which is really a life of prayer last week. I wanna stay there because last night I was awakened again at four. Um, my son Benny and I, take a day occasionally where we'll spend the night somewhere locally and hang out and it's supposed to be a restful time. That was last night and the Lord woke me up at four without an explanation. But the spirit of prayer hit me where for hours and hours I was in the spirit praying and I felt the Lord tell me last night, I want you again to discuss personal prayer and personal devotion to Jesus. And then we'll get back into Jesus in the Old Testament. Amen? 
Has anyone ever wondered why the Lord took Enoch? And by the way, that word took can mean to take hebraically to take as you would take someone in a wedding. It can mean that. Typically we look at that verse and consider it a snatching away or a, an escape. But the answer is um, the reason the Lord took Enoch is because he walked with God. It's in the Bible. Remember, the scriptures should answer the scriptures, right? There's something powerful about walking with God. Say this out loud. I want to walk with God. Say it again. One more time. This verse has always, in, a, in the most beautiful way, mesmerized me. Since my earliest days in the faith that really began here in this room, which is still crazy to be here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Since my earliest days, more than wanting to make some metrical or this, this numerical impact, I always just wanted to walk with God. I remember being uh, in Reading once and a, a young student asked Bill during a Q&A session, uh, we, they were meeting at the Civic Auditorium, which is a local auditorium there that, that BSSM uses and so does the church occasionally for conferences. You know, like most of you young people would, most, most Christians in general who want God to use their life, it's really easy to get caught up in the reach. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the reach. And I think that's really dangerous. Yeah. Now, the proof text or the justification biblically to, to live according to that culture is usually, well, they mention the numbers in the book of Acts. Yeah, a couple times. But the book of Acts is all about the activity of the Spirit. The Bible is not about numbers. The Bible is about Jesus himself. Now, does he care about what, would Jesus burn and does he burn in his heart to see if there are four people born again in a room, in a room, would he burn to see the fifth saved? Of course. But all that to say, that flows from his heart. So what it is is a natural byproduct, but it cannot be the fuel by which we live by metrics. It's dangerous. Whether you're a songwriter, an author, a pastor, an evangelist, a missionary, we can't say that the missionaries of the last generation were not successful or less successful than us because we're seeing greater breakthrough in their nations. If numbers determine success, then Calvary was less successful than Galilee. If I have to choose between the two, what happened in Calvary or what happened in Galilee, I'm choosing Calvary. Amen? When in fact, the Bible says because of David's sin, the Lord allowed the devil to tempt him to take a census. The Lord allowed David Listen carefully. Allow David to even think the thought. He did not tempt David, but he allowed him to walk through that because of David's failure. He took the census, in other words, began to glory in something other than the presence of God that was in that tent. And the Bible teaches that we should glory in the Lord and the Lord alone. Paul Paul is so whittled away by the Spirit where he literally says, I glory in Christ and am crucified. I have nothing left to say. And he's forgotten more Bible than we remember. Amen? Okay. Before I go any further, tonight, tonight is a pivotal, listen to me. Whenever I say this, how many of you are blessed? I don't never mess with you. I'm not here to tease you. 
you will need to be in this room tonight. I'll just say that. You need to be in this room to hear what will be spoken and the power of God that will be released. I believe there will be a divine encounter that will touch our hearts tonight that could carry us for months to come. Okay, you need to get in this room. If you're watching me on, on live stream tonight, you need to get to church tonight. Doors open at five o'clock. God will be here, but a word will be released that will shift our hearts. I've heard it. I know the word that's coming. You need to get in the room. Amen? All right, now, in Genesis chapter five, the scripture says in verse 24, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. That's a good way to go. I said, that's a good way to go. Amen? In the Garden of Eden, we see Adam walking with the Lord. Now, you have to understand, biblically, walking is not about cardio, biblically. <laughs> okay. It's about proximity. Listen, listen carefully. Intimacy. Dependency. Lordship. How many of you know Adam was not leading God around the garden? Amen. It's about voice. It's about touch. It's about the rhythm of the spirit. When you walk with God, you learn that there are moments where you feel his holy anticipation. It's why Philip runs to the Ethiopian's chariot rather than walk. How do you even know to do that? Because you are literally possessed with the Holy Spirit. You feel not only the assignment, but you feel the anticipation in the heart of God. You feel the excitement of the Spirit in certain moments, and you're literally caught up and yielded to what the Spirit is doing. And if he doesn't run, if he chooses to walk, Ethiopia doesn't get the gospel. A nation. It ends up being the first official Christian nation. Never, 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 never devalue the power of childlike obedience. Why am I even talking about this? Because this is part of walking with the Lord. Lovers love to walk with God. They do not merely glory in taking orders. Orders are important, and when he gives them, obey them. But God wants, to, God wants more with you than to give you direction alone. I, I tell our students this often. While we're looking for direction, God is looking for affection. And then we find direction in the affection. When the affection is birthed within us, we would rather die than lose it. So it becomes our fuel for obedience. Amen? Jesus tells the disciples, I have food you don't know about, to do the will of God. What's he saying? When I say yes, I am filled with nourishment. Yes? yes? So walking with God is holy and important to God. Yes. All right, now, I'm not going to go too far here, but I just want to mess with your brain. And, uh, hear your brain crackle here. The Bible says that you could hear the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden. I want you to contemplate what that verse means and we'll talk in a few weeks. The sound, the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden. So meditate on that. Pray through that. I don't want to give it to you. But now I also want you to think about the Lord's heart in walking with us. While Adam missed his appointment, God was on time for his. And God had to ask Adam, where are you? Not because God was lost 
and needed a guide through the garden. The whole point was, well, there were many points to that question. One was to reveal Adam's failure, of course. But it's also to say, hey, I showed up and you didn't. What is at stake here is, is so much greater than just heaven or hell, though both are real, regardless of what people preach today. I said both are real. Okay, you hesitated. Both are real. Maybe this section believes the Bible. Both are real, regardless of what people preach today. This section, okay, you... This is the purgatory section. All right. Both are real, regardless of what people preach today. Good. There you all are in. All right. You know, in the last days, the issue is not going to be, the, 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 the main struggle will not be uh, the, op, the, the blatant opposition of Jesus. What is antichrist to the core, however, are those who claim to know Jesus and disconnect from his words. That's when you'll know the cat is out of the hat and to make yourself ready, and it's happening. It's happening right now. People have the audacity to believe that because they heard from God, that their ability to hear from God overwhelms and overpowers the scriptures and what the church and the church fathers and the apostolic age, what it thrusted forth for the last 2,000 years, that they are hearing more clearly than those who were martyred. It is pride of the nth degree to think that they found something that Polycarp missed or that Ignatius missed or that Athanasius missed or the Apostle Paul missed. And that's the age we're in. It's a salvation with no cross. That's what it is. No, really. It's kingdom with no king. How many of you know if you say you're my king, that means I listen to you. You're the boss. We just need basic Sunday school teaching again. You know what I mean? I'm not sure we need to equip our kids all the time on like how to get words of knowledge. I would just like them to like obey. I don't care if you're prophesying to me if you don't just do what I ask. <laughs> like, tell them about Jonah and the whale again, Daniel and the lion's death. Basic Bible. Can we get that back in to a generation? It's not boring, it's actually electric in the heart. Noah walks with God, the Bible says. Adam walks with God, Elijah walks with God. Elisha walks with God. Samuel clearly walks with God. Abraham walks with God. He has a meal with the Lord. Tells his wife to cook the Lord a meal. Better get that one right. <laughs> Quick, kill the fatted calf and yogurt. Okay, Lord. The Lord loves Greek yogurt. <laughs> I knew I was onto something. Abraham walked with God. So much so that the Lord wanted to discuss his judgment upon Sodom with Abraham. And actually said, shall I do it and not talk to my friend? I wonder if we realize what we're missing by forsaking friendship with God. Salvation is free. Friendship takes time. Is there a price involved? Of course. But I don't want to focus on that this morning. I want to provoke you with the glory that's available in that devotion. I feel like I'm eight years old today. I'm all happy. I didn't sleep all night, but I, 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 I met with him last night. And there's joy in his presence. There's, there's grace in his presence. There's this ability to fly higher than all the stress. And do you... <laughs> You don't think you pastor without stress, right? There are issues galore. 
I'm telling you, people do amazing things and dumb things. Say amen. But say, but not me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll just look to the other side. No, I'm joking. You can teach people for years, systematically, methodically, in a heartfelt way. You can live before them in a heartfelt way. You can love them. They won't love you back. It is just part of the Christian life. You do not have to get pulled into that pit. Now, you can feel the pain of a father. You know, when when our students, for instance, do something that I know they're better than. If they adapt a perspective that I've taught them, that our whole team has taught them not to adapt, of course it crushes you. Then you remember what you were like at 19 or 29. Some of y'all still like that at 59, (laughs) which is proof. Age or time saved is not maturity. Time in the presence is maturity. It's true. I know people that got born again the same year I got born again. They're like 70. They still act like they're seven. I hope they're not watching. (laughs) Spiritually, they're like that because they haven't gone in. And they had the same invitation of others, same opportunity, same sermons they sat under. A few said, I heard the knock. I'm going to open the door and let them come in. There's such beauty there. I, my heart breaks. I'm just going to be honest with you. My heart breaks over what certain worship leaders burn for. How certain worship leaders live their lives. Not ours. I'm, I'm talking about in general. How certain pastors live. The grind they're under. My God. The first thing out of their mouth is how many attended that week. Or they point to church and say, this is how many came Sunday morning. In my heart I go, it's breaking you have no idea the, the rat race you're signing up for. It's going to destroy you. You're glorying in the wrong thing. Don't take the census. There's judgment on the other end of it. Taking the census means you're touching the glory. You're saying, I want to know what I built. David forgot he was just a little shepherd boy. Who am I? And who is my father's house? He forgot that. That's why the Lord had to tell him, I pulled you off the sheepfold. Do you remember when I called you? There's such danger there. Same with whatever, like the books I write and stuff. There's so many more ways to sell them. But there's a higher way. There's this plateau that that belongs to those who are saying, Lord, build the house and then live in it. Come build it, but you won't live there if you don't build it. He only builds in houses he constructs. The, 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 the goal is to walk with God, not feel uh, needed. That's important, but that's not the goal. What if this church burned, what if this church saw success as walking with the Lord? All right. That was a good intro. Luke 11, two. Let's get in there. Let's talk about prayer. Now, the church's message is not prayer. I want you to hear me. That is not our message. You may have an assignment to build a prayer house, a prayer environment. This whole movement is a prayer environment, but the message of the kingdom is not prayer. The message is Jesus. Prayer is the means by which we connect with the Lord, but it is not the gospel. I'm not devaluing it, but remember, this cannot be a house of prayer unless it is his house. My house And that my part is conditional, and you know what that is. We come and enter in his name. We gather in his name. The condition is met corporately. Once that condition is met corporately, he then begins to invite us into communion with him, and a very common name for that communion is prayer. Okay? But the gospel is not prayer. 
The gospel is Jesus Christ. The way you learn and know the Lord is through prayer. And that's what I want to discuss today. Luke 11, verse 2. Actually, let's look at verse 1. Now, it came to pass, underline this, as he was praying. Underline that part. As he, Jesus, was praying. In a certain place. That is important and it is not law. When he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples to pray. So here the disciples look at the life of the Lord. They see him walk on water, multiply bread, multiply fish. Lepers are cleansed, blind eyes open. He answers uh, those whom nobody has the guts to answer with such accuracy and wisdom that they're afraid to even talk to him anymore. Isn't that amazing? I love that about him, by the way. Everyone always says, be silent. No, no, it's, what is the Holy Spirit saying? Because sometimes you have to speak up. You, you, do, you, you need to be silent, that's holy. But if someone comes against the Lord in pride, we see the Lord schooling them, it's beautiful. Just trashing, not trashing in a bad way, but just destroying them, and I love, I love that about him. He's like, you know. I think it's beautiful. I love everything about Jesus. I don't, I don't know about you. So the disciples see all of this and they, they don't ask, teach us to be smarter. Jesus, do you have an eight-step plan for healing? Now, many of my friends do that and I love them. I love them. We just don't see it in the life of Jesus. In fact, he never preaches a single message on healing because he is healing. <laughs> it's why when Pilate goes, what is truth? The Lord doesn't answer. He's like, there's nothing I say would more properly represent truth than me just standing in front of you. You're looking at truth. In fact, he's skinned alive at that moment, beaten, brutalized, beard plucked from his face, and he's telling Pilate, you are staring at truth. Amen? So that being said, the disciples don't ask him how to do that. How do we cast out demons? Jesus, do you have an activation track on water walking? <laughs> Can you activate me in water walking, please? The link's in my bio. <laughs> We're activating crazy people, by the way. Not here, but the church needs to stop activating people who need to read their Bible. Because there are some wacky people who've been activated. Jesus loves them, though. I'm growing in it. All right. They don't ask any of that. They said, you know what? When you go up that mountain, something always happens when you come back down. And we're not interested on the technique. Tell us, what's going on up there? Teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples to pray. So that tells me that Discipleship 101 is teaching people to commune with God. When did they ask the Lord to teach them to pray? After he was praying. Now listen carefully. How many of you would love your children or people you love or friends to pray more? then you become the message. His prayer life triggered a hunger in theirs. That's the best way. The best way is to be exposed to people who know the Lord. Because something about them triggers a curiosity in you. Now, I'm going to share, share something with you, personal and vulnerable. I have probably seen as many healings as anybody else I know my age. I'm not saying through, through our ministry alone. But traveling with my father-in-law and being in the meeting since 89, I've seen real miracles. Like stuff that is from like the Bible. Never once have I had a desire to sit with him and learn to see more miracles. Not once. 
what I have had the desire to experience, if I, and we haven't done this yet, but maybe we will at some point <laughs> when he slows down <laughs> eventually when he's 170, probably when he'll slow down. I would, I would talk to him about, walk me through the first 30 minutes of your time with Jesus. And then I'd make him say it again. And then I'd slow him down and I would ask him more annoying questions. I would ask him about, from a corporate perspective, I would ask him what's going through his heart uh, when he's ministering to the Lord on a platform. I, 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 my hunger is not directed in the actual work of the ministry. But the, my hunger is aimed at his communion with God. Because I know if I get that, that everything else will fall in place. Because I've seen too many people who've built massive structures who don't walk with that dripping moisture, the tenderness, that heart. I don't want that. I want that fragrance in my heart. I want that fragrance in my life. I want that saintliness, that inexplainable mystery. You know, when the Russian delegation was looking hundreds of years ago, looking for the, the faith for their nation, they tried every faith, and finally they stumbled, stumbled into Saint Sophia, which is now in Istanbul. At the time, it was Constantinople. Before the Muslims took it, and it was the epicenter of the faith. And this Russian delegation walked into a worship service during the communion that was being served, which we're going to take today. When they walked into that building, after studying every other faith, they sent message back to Russia. We have found the truth. We have found the people who seem to live in heaven while they're on the earth. There's something about the presence of Jesus in a people, in a person, in an individual that provokes hunger in those that God puts around them. Everything you see corporately here, uh, listen to me, started in a room with the door closed. Everything. Our value for worship started in a room with the door closed all alone. Me coming up here, I remember one time I was on a panel and somebody said, there were like five speakers on the panel, and somebody said, how can I flow in the Holy Spirit better? I'm a pastor. And the four speakers said, they pointed at me, as though flowing is a topic. As though you can answer that in an answer to a question. It's like saying, um, teach me Jessica. Can you answer that? How could I teach a person to a people as a sermon? But it's a matter of history. The, the, the way you know to change a song is because you learn to change the song in your bedroom. Did you understand? The way you know when to preach and when to wait is because you learned in your bedroom when to read and when to wait. The only way to know that the set's over is to be incredibly sensitive to the person of the Spirit. We don't time our sets here, and we never will. And if the next generation does, <laughs> if when I go to heaven that happens, may the Lord just, I don't know, do something. I don't want to say it. Something. Something. <laughs> Something beautifully violent. All right. <laughs> the only way to know when to end the set is because you learned in private. Do you understand? The only way to stick to a clear gospel is because you realize the Lord is in the room and he's watching and trusting you. And you learn that in private. The, the reason you have tough conversations and difficult confrontations is because you're protecting something that's more sacred to you than what the world sees. You don't want the Lord's glory to walk away. 
You don't want that. The, I'm not talking about the anointing or gifting, but the glory is like a slippery, it's him, but it's, it's like, it's a gentle walk. Yes, you're holding his hand, but it's, I've never seen anyone lose that fragrance and regain it. Maybe one. I've never, I've never. I've seen ministries continue. I've seen ministries grow. I've seen reach continue. I've seen reach grow. I've seen social media numbers skyrocket, which to most of Gen Z and millennials means God is happy and it has nothing to do with following. I've seen that continue, but when you talk to them, the tears don't flow anymore. The, the tone is different in their voice. They're not burning. They're, they're not up early with Jesus anymore. They don't, they don't, the, the, their free time doesn't prove their love for Jesus. It's directed in other areas. They don't talk about him the way they used to or as frequently. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm afraid of losing. With everything in me. That sounds like a nightmare. Oh, Lord, never let it happen. I pray that some of you in your hearts even now are praying, Jesus, don't do it here. Don't do it in me. Don't do it here. And, and, and here, here's, the, here's the most sober, not the most sobering, but here's another sobering perspective. I've never seen it transcend a generation. Never. I know a lot of people in the ministry. I've never seen in my experience, I'm not saying they're not out there. I've never seen the next generation pick up a, a baton from a father and a mother and break into more glory. Never seen it. So, there's so many reasons for that. One is entitlement. The kingdom doesn't operate that way. This isn't a family bakery. You don't just get the family business. As much as we believe in legacy and generations, of course I want my children to step into everything God has for them and to lead. But they're going to fight their lions and bears. And they're going to have to fall on the right side. They're going to have to fall on his side. This is this kind of stuff that goes through my, my mind. So here we see the prayer life of Jesus provoking his disciples, that next generation. And so this is the greatest way to provoke prayer in a people. Look at Psalm 109. Is this good? Psalm 109, verses 1 through 4. Do not keep silent, O God of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful have opened against me. This is speaking of false accusation. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They have also surrounded me with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. Listen carefully now. And return from my love. They are my accusers. I, obviously, David is writing here, but I believe this is speaking of the Lord Jesus. In return from my love, they are my accusers. Now, what's the answer? But I give myself to prayer. The Hebrew actually reads this, but, in the Hebrew, it would say it this way, I have become prayer. So now I want to get to what prayer is and what it isn't, and then we're going to pray. <laughs> now, go back to Luke 11, because most, most of you are saying, I have a job, there's no way I can pray. Or I do this, there's no way. I can pray all day, I'm not a pastor, I'm not... With a just hold your horses. Look down at verse two. 
of, of Luke 11. So he said to them, when you pray, is there a comma after pray there? There should be. When you pray, say. I'll say it again. It'll land. Just say, Holy Spirit, help me understand this scripture. We know you well, Lord. When you pray, say. Or, let me say it another way. Don't say until you've begun praying. Don't say until you pray. It tells me praying is much bigger than saying. Wait for the activity of prayer to begin in the heart, then speak. Most of us speak and never begin praying because we don't know what praying is. We have limited praying to saying. And speaking is a small portion of the life of prayer. Now, we'll get into that more deeply. So here we see in Psalm 109 that there are many accusers that speak falsely, and the answer is, I have become prayer. I'm not just saying one. I have become a prayer. I am embodying prayer. Look at Zechariah 12.10. We're going to move through these quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Do you like this? Yes. Zechariah 12.10. Can somebody help me with my voice? Is Dion here? Can you grab a mic? Can we get him on real quickly? Just need, need your help there. I don't want to wear my voice out. Zechariah 12.10. There, Dion. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Right, stop there. Say that again. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Okay, what is grace? Grace is the supernatural, empowering ability and presence of the Holy Spirit. It's not a, a, a getaway free card with, uh, regarding sin because the grace of God was on Jesus. Jesus did not need to be forgiven of sin. We're talking about the animating capability of the spirit that turns you into an avenger when you're just average. Okay. God is talking about the spirit of grace and what, what else, Dion? Supplication. supplication. That word supplication is prayer. To beseech the Lord is the actual translation. So the Holy Spirit himself, don't miss this part, is the one who prays. That's good news. He is called the spirit of grace and prayer. So prayer is not so much something I do and accomplish, but something I give myself over to. I want us to go so deep. Prayer is God working, doing all things in us. What do you call somebody who runs? What do you call somebody who gardens? What do you call someone who prays? When you get this, you will give your heart over to prayer rather than try to generate prayer, which you cannot do. Prayer is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.26. Read that, Dion. Oh, I'm getting excited now. I don't know why. Maybe you do. Tell me later. All right. Read it. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself... Whoa, whoa, may say it again, slower. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Say, I'm too weak to pray. Anybody ever felt like that? What's the answer? Read it. For we do know not what to pray. As well, we hold on. Are. I'm too weak and I don't know how. And none of you do and neither do I. Nobody does. Only the religious think they know how to pray without God. 
Keep reading. But the Spirit himself makes... Hold on, what's the answer? But the... Spirit. But the... Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the answer. So you're too tired to pray? Welcome to the club. You don't know what to do when you start? Welcome to the club. What's the answer? But the Spirit. Prayer is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, not your ministry. Well, I'm going to upset some people. I don't want to. There are only two intercessors mentioned in the Bible, Jesus and the Spirit. Now, many intercession meetings look like CrossFit. There are shoes flying, shovels, prophetic act, you, sweating, can't breathe, screaming. It is wild. Then you, at the end, you go, what did y'all do in there? You won't believe it. But what did you accomplish? Is your heart full? No, I'm mad at every principality. Okay, you did not pray. If you left that meeting more aware of principalities than Jesus, you didn't pray. I'm not saying you can't be used for intercession, but, but let's be really clear. We dare not steal the office from the Spirit and Jesus, whoever lives to intercede for us. It's not about taking the office. It's about yielding into the activity of the one who's interceding. Can I keep going? Yes. I didn't know if y'all were there, you know. Prayer is a river that is not generated. The spring that fuels that river flows from the heart of God. You just got to get your raft that we call surrender or yieldedness and get in the river. So I don't know what to do when I'm, what? you don't know how to lay on a, raft and a lazy river? Just get in. What do I say? Well, we'll get into that later. But first steps first, dip your toe in the river. I guarantee you dip your toe in, it'll sweep you off your feet. An hour will go by and you're beaming with joy and have no idea why. Prayer is his ministry. He is the high priest. Paul says, he knows how to help our weaknesses. Here's a good one. I, I'm afraid to pray in the mornings because I don't want to offend God by falling asleep. And that's the excuse to remain asleep. It's, it's amazing. I don't, I don't want to... I'd get up now, but I would just fall asleep on you, and I know you'd be so offended, so I'm just going to sleep here. That's what's going on. So if you fall asleep, wake up. People have asked me that. Pastor Michael, I want to I wanna be intimate with Jesus. But I, fall, I fell asleep. And uh, what do I do? I go, wake up. <laughs> Keep going. Do you think he's infuriated at the thought that you dozed off? Or does the scripture say he, he knows our friend? He knows that we're but dust. And do you know, if you're faithful when you're awake, he'll invade your sleep. I'm telling you if, you, if you're faithful when you're awake and you doze off like it's some mortal sin, if you doze off, he'll invade those little doze-offs and he'll speak to you. I've had it happen many times. Can I give you one more verse? Say the Spirit. the Spirit. Go to Matthew 26, verse 40. Would you read that, Dion? Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Whoa. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Whoa. Okay, read that again. 
Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, what, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, now, there's your answer. If Jesus Christ were in a garden with you and he were sweating drops of blood and he looked at you and said, please pray for me, you would think you'd stay awake for him. But you wouldn't. Neither would I. And Jesus tells them why. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Now, he is talking about Peter's spirit there that is now one with the Holy Spirit. And we're going to get into this next week. Are you all enjoying this teaching? Yes. I feel like it's, it's, it's for us right now. The Bible says, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. So when I was a little kid here, my father-in-law would take a bottle of water, two cups. I don't have clear cups, but he'd take them and pour. There would be a, a one cup in the middle, and he'd pour uh, water into that cup. That would symbolize our spirit. And then he would pour uh, another bottle of water into the same cup, and the water would obviously unite to the degree that you couldn't tell where one, one batch began and what, where the other ended. So is our spirit with the Lord's. We are married to the Lord. He who is joined, in other words, he who is born again, belongs to the Lord, who is under the Lord's beautiful yoke, is one spirit. We call that marriage. All right. The Lord now is pointing Peter away from his physical capabilities to the capability of the Holy Spirit, who is the only one who gets us through prayer. Prayer is not the price to be used by God. That's such a tragedy. Prayer is the reward of Calvary. Communion with God. Now, if Jesus were bleeding, sweating drops of blood in front of you and said, pray for me, the fact that we, Peter fell asleep there shows his need for someone, the Holy Spirit. I heard a preacher say, now, how many of you would be different than the disciples if Jesus walked up to you in the first century, you're a first century Jew, you're drinking coffee on the shore of the Sea of Galilee there at the Ritz, <laughs> and here this man just walks by who's from Nazareth. And I heard the, the, this theologian say, how many of you would say, oh, that's Jesus of Nazareth, the son of God. And every, all, all these preachers' hands went up because he was training preachers. And he said, congratulations, you now entered the company of the demons because they're the only ones who recognize Jesus as being the son of God. He <laughs> said, good job, you're in their company. Then they all put their hands down. The point was this, only the Spirit, only the Holy Spirit could reveal Jesus. Only the Holy Spirit awakens us from spiritual slumber. There's the Son of Man bleeding in front of them, and they can't even pray for an hour. An hour. So what's the good news? The Holy Spirit is the good news. The Holy Spirit is the good news regarding prayer. He will teach you. And may he teach us over these next few weeks. This is just the beginning. This is the appetizer. We're going to go deeper. Because I want you to step into continual prayer. Unceasing prayer that Paul talks about. Paul told the church, I pray for you always. Well, how do you do that when you're preaching? There's a way. And that's where the Lord's going to take us. Amen? Joel, would you help me? With every head bowed and eye closed, maybe, uh, actually, can we pray in the Spirit here just for a minute? Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name forever and ever and ever. Blessed be your name. Just pray out loud in the Spirit. Praise you, Jesus. Blessed are you forever and ever. 
wonderful Lord, we love you. We give you all the glory, all the glory, all the honor, all the power, all the praise is yours. You're beautiful, Lord. You're beautiful. Reveal your beauty to your people. By your spirit, reveal your beauty to your people. Would all of you stand, please? I just remain praying, though, one, with your eyes closed, no one looking around, nobody moving around. I believe there are many in this room that have never known true communion with God. Keep, keep, I want everyone just to keep praying. True communion with the Lord. Jesus became a fire escape. He became a ticket to heaven when he himself is our heaven. Jesus died. Listen carefully. Jesus died. I want our whole team just praying in the spirit. Jesus died to commune with you, to be one with you. To invite you in to the very same love that is shared between the Father and the Son. Yes, he died. Yes, he did die to shed his blood and wash away every sin you ever committed. Yes, you don't want that on your account. No, you don't. But he also died to fill you with himself. Take your heart and your body and make it his home so that you could walk with the Lord. So that you'd walk with him hand in hand by faith. So that you would know what it's like to live in this crazy fallen world with joy, with peace, with the sense of his presence. This is prayer. This is a life of communion. Or this is the Christian life to walk with the Lord himself, to truly know him and listen carefully and allow yourself to be known. I feel in my spirit this morning that many of you, you've been holding, I, I, I just feel so strongly, these walls up between you and the Lord because you feel like you can't trust his people. This isn't about his people. This is about Jesus, friend. My question to you is, what has Jesus ever done to you? Was it his death? Was it him shedding his blood? Was it him offering his face to those who beat it and mocked him? He was spat upon and hated. He did that because he loves you. Don't hold Jesus captive to what his people have done. There's such beauty on the other side of this thing. And maybe there's others. This thing's been just so robotic. It's been just been like, I prayed that prayer. I got it done. I did that. My sins are good. And I've gone about my life. That's not the Christian life, friend. Christian life is a life of love. It's a life of walking with Jesus and giving him your all. The Christian life is a life of turning away from everything and coming to the Lamb and knowing him, knowing him. Uh, Listen to these words. Matthew chapter 7 says that Jesus looks upon these people who possibly were preachers. And on that last day, they said, we cast out devils in your name. We healed the sick in your name. We prophesied in your name. And Jesus said, away from me. I never knew you. See, the point is knowing the Lord and him knowing you. It's not the, a mental knowledge he's talking about. No, no, no. It's a marital knowledge. It's a bridal knowledge. It's the two becoming one. And if while I'm speaking, listen, if while I'm speaking, you feel, you sense the Lord's presence on you, you feel 
you're thinking right now, that's what I want. I want you to get out of your seat and come down here. Maybe you've fallen away from the Lord. Listen, maybe you've just walked away. Maybe your heart is cold. Maybe it's, you're not burning anymore. I want you to come as well. You come, come. God bless you. God bless you. You come as well. Make this the Sunday where the Lord's presence, yep, come in. Thank you, Father. Let this be the Sunday where the Lord's presence ignites a fire in your heart. That the slavery, that, that slavery that just keeps you numb and dead inside. Some of you have been so burned by church, you blame Jesus. And you bit the hook, and there's a distance now between you and him. Refuse that. Come to Jesus. Step out of that, that thought. Don't blame the Lord. There's no one as beautiful. And as they're coming, I want the moment they get down here, I want team members around them. Yeah, this whole front row. Yeah. Worship team, would you help as well? Thank you, Father. Nobody praying by themselves. Thank you, Lord. They're still coming. I give you all the glory. All the glory. All the glory. All the glory. If you're visiting this morning, maybe you came in from out of town. Maybe you've watched us, I don't know. I don't know how you even found out about us, but I feel in my spirit that, that Jesus is offering himself as he really is to you. And you've never even really known that. You've known the culture around Christianity, but never truly met the Lord. Today's your day. I want to invite you. I just feel that strongly for somebody who's visiting. Forget what comes with Jesus' image. In fact, forget Jesus' image completely right now. And come meet that beautiful man who's here by his spirit. I want us all to pray right now. Can we do that? out loud, Heavenly Father, forgive my sin. Wash me in the precious blood of Jesus. I've come forward this morning because I want to know you. I really want to know you. I repent. I turn from everything this world offers. I turn from the devil himself and I even lay my own will down today. Jesus, be my all in all. Be my everything. I believe with all my heart that you're the Son of God, that you died on the cross, that you were buried and raised again and that you're seated at the right hand of God and that you're returning again. You're the one who pours out the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, pour your Spirit out upon me now. Now, church, just pray. Pray in the Spirit out there. Father, fill them. Fill them from head, head to toe. Fill this whole house with your precious presence. Fill them, I pray. Fill them, fill them, fill them. Fill them. May they know you. May they deeply know you. As they draw near, you promise to draw near to them. May they know you, Father. May they know you. Experientially, may they know you. May they know you, Lord. Hallelujah. Guys, can we make sure each of them get a, get a pamphlet? Do we have those? No. If the Lord's touching you, don't pay attention to me. But if you're able, if you're able right now, I'd just like you to look. Look at me. You're about to get a pamphlet that's just going to serve you. That's all. And after this meeting this morning, I'm going to ask you, listen carefully. Just to go meet with our team. There's a, there's a booth in the, in the lobby, the New Believers booth. Even if some of you have known the Lord, it's important you enter the life of the church. It's important you, 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 
you are in the Word. It's important you're baptized in water. It's important you learn to pray. It's important that, that you learn to preach the gospel. It's very important that you understand the Lord's desire to empower you with the power of the Holy Spirit to live the Christian life. And we just want to serve you. So what we're asking is that you allow us to come alongside of you and serve you in that regard. There's nobody like Jesus. Amen. I said there's no one like Jesus. Does everybody have their communion elements? We're going to receive it standing up. For those of you who are here on, up front, stay where you are. I want us to receive the body and blood of Jesus together. So can we make sure these precious people are, are served? And I'll need the elements as well. I was reading an early church document the other day. Maybe one day I can, we can look into some of that stuff. But it was describing the meetings of the early church. Some were in houses, some were not. The point isn't the building. The point is the presence of the Lord. But basically their church meetings were very simple. They read the scriptures, they prayed for one another, they worshiped and they took communion. And so really, historically, it's not a church service uh, the way it should be without celebrating the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. This is really the highlight of the meeting, is to come before the Lord. Now, Father, we thank you for your healing power, your forgiving power. Wash us clean, forgive our motives, that are fallen, forgive the things we say and do. We recognize you here in this blessed meal, Lord. And we remember your words, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. You told us to do this in remembrance of you, and we do remember you. Come on, just take a moment here. We remember your wounds, we remember your suffering. We remember your beautiful face beaten beyond recognition. We remember your hands pierced, your feet pierced. We remember the stripes on your back to heal us. We remember the crown of thorns. We remember your bleeding body. We remember you being suspended on the tree to take the curse so that we would receive life. And now we lift this precious bread, the body of the Lord, now, wonderful Holy Spirit, as we prepare to receive, I pray we would receive the body and blood of the Lord Jesus in faith. We break it together because your body was torn. And now we receive the bread of life, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the power of God flood our bodies. May we live long, healthy, blessed lives. I declare that over you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's receive Take the cup. Thank you for drinking the cup, Lord. You drank the cup. And we do thank you for your precious blood. And without the shedding of blood, there can be no atonement, no remission. And it's your blood that speaks a better word. And today you sit as high priest at the right hand of the Father as our representative. And the Father sees us in you. Mm. And he sees you in us. What a treasure. As we receive the precious blood of Jesus, I thank you for your word that says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And so Lord, as we receive, we receive the very life of the Savior. Protect every person who can hear me right now. Protect every marriage with the blood. Protect every child with the blood of Jesus. Protect 
our homes, protect the future of our children, protect the businesses, protect, Lord, our nation, protect your people, protect this house, protect this ministry, protect us all, protect everyone under the sound of my voice with the power of the blood of Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for being drawn to this moment. Empower your people in Jesus' name. Candice, would you come? Would you all stand, please? I want to pray a blessing. How many of you know blessings work? I said, how many of you know blessings work? This isn't a fancy way to end a service. I want you to grab it by faith. Would you just lift your hands? Father in heaven, let the power of the Holy Spirit dwell upon your people. May the good plans of God rest upon them. May health be theirs. May joy, peace, righteousness be theirs all in the spirit. Lord, your word says they looked unto you and their faces were radiant. Let this be the most radiant people staring at you. May every one of your loved ones come to Jesus. Oh, yes. May every loved one come to Jesus. May you see many family members saved this year. May every sickness in your family be healed. May it go now in Jesus' name. May you walk in the light of his presence all your days. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord praise? God bless you. Make sure, listen, before you go, just trust me. Get here tonight. Doors open at 5. We love you. God bless you. Oh, the blood.
everyone, Michael and Jess here. We are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. The local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that. We believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we want to invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is going to do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're gonna show you right now. We wanna take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10:42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into children's church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. 
The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space on the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.